Good morning, everyone, and thank you for waking up with me today on Up With India. I'll be joined by a national award-winning author, publisher, and philanthropist, Tracy T. Cooper. She's from Philadelphia, and she's here with me to discuss how she has committed to what she describes as changing lives through her work. We're going to talk a little bit about the success of her newest novel and more about where this bestseller is going next. I'm looking forward to bringing her on the show now. Tracy, how are you? are you? Hi, India. How are you? Good, good. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm really uh, excited to get into all of the nitty gritty about what you have going on. <laughs> <laughs> So let's hop right into things. You are not just a award-winning author, but you are a seven-time award-winning author. First of all, where does anyone find the time to write seven books? How did you get it done? Let's start at the beginning. What was the first novel that you wrote and uh, how did it land you in this seat that you're in today? So my first novel is called Scandal in the Pews. Um, it actually started in my senior year of high school. Ironically, it wasn't published until 2015 when I kind of collected all of the pieces of my story and finally found the courage to put it out there because I've always been a little shy about sharing my work with others. Mm -hmm. And when you got that first uh, national award, what did that moment feel like for you? Where were you at that point in your life? Um, you know what? I was actually in the process of self-discovery and I, I just, I didn't really have the confidence that I should have had in my work at that time. Um, I just knew that it was a passion of mine, but landing that national best-selling seat actually just thrusted me into my purpose. I knew that writing was a part of my purpose. Mm, you led me right into my next question, which <laughs> was, what, what is your purpose? Of course, we talk about the meaningful work that you do, but why is it so important for you to be able to take the, the words that are in your head and put them on paper to inspire other people? I, I learned at a very young age that words have power. And for me, I've always found a sense of joy and peace in writing mm -hmm. and, and just wordplay overall. So for me, I, I find that writing is just a whole other world. Like it opens us, opens us up to another world. It's, it's fantasy meets reality for me. Mm -hmm. What is the most important message uh, that is well noticed in each of your books that kind of is a resounding message throughout? What, what would you say that is? You can bounce back from anything. Mm. And what does that mean to you? <laughs> that no matter how low you go or how low you may feel, you have the power within you to overcome any obstacle that's thrown your way. Mm -hmm. um, we, on our way to our purpose, I feel like we go through several tunnels, but we have to remember that there's light at the end of that tunnel. It's not, you're not going to be there forever. What is one of the most important moments in your life that you can remember that you bounced back from? Whew. Um, an important moment in my life that I've back, bounced back from. Um, in 2012, I um, I didn't have a job. I didn't really know what my next step in life was. I didn't know where I was going or where I was I was headed. And I can remember going to church with my grandmother and um, hearing the message exactly what I just said to you, which was that there's light at the end of your tunnel. And I remember having nothing but $30 in my pocket, not knowing how I was going to be able to go on job interviews the following week, or, you know, even have money to eat. And I remember at the end of the pastor's message, me putting that $30 into the offering plate as a sacrifice. And my grandmother and I went home for dinner with my grandmother and grandfather. and. I just felt a sense of renewal and faith, but my grandmother and grandfather, you know, like handed me an envelope as they always did when I went to their house, they gave me an envelope on the way out the door. And when I got, you know, to the train, I looked in the envelope and it was five times what I had put into the offering plate. So it kind of just renewed me and let me know, like, no matter how much you sacrifice or how low you are, there, there's always something better. That, that, um, that same week I landed a job with Amtrak, which is my current, you know, my current nine to five job. And like I said, it just let me know that it doesn't matter how low you go. There is always 
there, there, you can bounce back. You can, you know, things get greater later. And, and a lot of times we lose faith while we're going through the tunnel. But if we just stick it out to the end, like we can see that light, you know, you, you're going to go, you're going to land in the destination in which you are supposed to be in. So. You, know, you hinted on something that is so important, which is that uh, there's so much that you talked about, but really that last part for me, that journey of a hustler, having this nine to five, but then also having your your passion on your purpose right on the side of you. What is the advice that you give to entrepreneurs who are figuring out how to balance and juggle it all? You know, some people tell them, quit your job and pour it all into your passion. But what is your advice, Tracy? Do what you have to do until you can do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. A lot of us think that entrepreneurship is easy, but we need seed. You need a seed to be an entrepreneur. And a lot of our nine to, nine to five jobs are our seed. So even though you're watering it with your passion on your way to your purpose, don't don't lose your seed in the process. Don't 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 cut out your roots until you've actually grown a tree. And then you can prune and get rid of the nine to five. But you have to work your seed until you've actually grown your fruit. I feel like you're preaching right now, you know? <laughs> I'm excited over here. I already want to get a book and crack it open. But for someone that has never read one of your books and they are now interested in it, what, when they open that book, what is the first thing that's just going to pop out at them and get them right sucked in into your work? That is real life. It is it's real life. Um, I, I, it's real life. It's gritty. It's raw. It's spicy just a bit, but it has all the makings of, of things that happen in our everyday lives. Mm-hmm. You, um, talk, uh, about how you are inspired by other writers. You listed sister soldier of New York and also, uh, uh, another uh, writer, Terry, who is from Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah. And so when you talk about a little bit of spicy and you talk a little bit about real, when I think about Sister Soldier and reading The Coldest Winter Ever, that's what I felt like I got. But what did you pull out of the novels of these women that really has now um, helped to influence that you put out? Well, Sister Soldier, I- She has a very impressive vernacular. Like she, her wordplay is amazing. Her verbiage is outstanding. It's not, um, she, she writes in a way where you kind of want to look up those words. Like, well, what did that mean? And I love that. It inspired me to like, I have a daily, I have a weekly practice, which is to learn 10 new words a week and I incorporate them into my life. So Sister Soldier kind of inspired me to do that because I wanted my vernacular to be as as impressive as as hers was. Um, With Terry Wood, he has an excellent um, way of telling a story. It's it's from page one. She knows how to suck you entirely into the book. And so when I wrote my first book, I knew that if I didn't capture the readers by page three, I would never capture them. Mm. So. Do you think that Black women are as widely recognized as great novelists as their counterparts? Or do you think that it is important for us to um, acknowledge more Black writers, Black female writers and their voices? My answer on that is very mixed because, of course, we are recognized in our community. However, I, I don't think in within you know, when we think worldwide, we are as recognized with Pulitzer Surprise and, and things like that. So I do think it's very important that we begin to expand our voice. And that was a big thing for me. Like, I, I didn't want to write one way. I wanted to make sure that I could I could stand on a bookshelf in Barnes & Nobles against my counterparts and still be recognized. Mm-hmm. And how has your book selling, your book events, how have they been going? Talk to me a little bit about your promotion and and how people have been receiving the work. Um, My my book release parties are probably the highlight of my year. Um, With COVID, of course, you know, this year is going to be a bit different. But my book release parties are are probably the highlight of my year. They are always sold out events. Um, And I find that my, my readers 
are so diverse. None of them are the same. They they range from, you know, the seniors to, you know, men to um, young women, old women. Every, everyone kind of relates to my writing because as I said, it's, it's raw, it's gritty, and it's real life. So, and I found with my latest book that my, that the male readers are like, you drop, you know, you drop game in that one. Like that one was, you know, I want my girl to read it because you dropped a lot of game in it. So, and when they say game, what are they describing? Talk to me about one of the novels that kind of stuck out for them. Girl, secure yourself is um, my latest novel, and girl, secure yourself to me is a coming of age tale of of a young woman. Um, I find that a lot of times we think. As young women, we think that securing yourself means that you have labels and, and you have a nice car. But when you are just fine on the outside, it's not enough. You know, or when you are just, you know, popping on the outside, it's not enough. We have to make sure that we're secure mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. So a lot of men agree with that, that, you know, a lot of women, if it was a book that told the story that we need substance to go along with our finances. Do you think that in the era that we're living in right now that a woman of substance is not as um, valued as anything else, w what would you say? I do, I do because we're looking at Instagram and, and a lot of young women are not, you know, they're not building substance Eter internally. We're just, you know, oh, I'm gonna, you know, they, they want to look like what they're seeing on TV or what they see on social media. So they forget that, you know, being fine and being fly has, it, it has other principles that go along with it. Mm -hmm. You started writing at the age of five. So as, as a young woman, you know, growing up, talk to me about some of the things that you experienced or went through that has also contributed to the work that you write and the reason why you want to empower women to, you know, walk in, in their light and, and have substance. Talk to me about kind of growing up, Tracy. So the story that sticks out in my head was seventh grade. Um, as I said, I've always been a writer. I've always been very imaginative. And so in my seventh grade year, um, we were learning about fables or myths and, and writing about them. And I created this story about um, an African king and queen who had, um, who had given birth to twins. One of them was the light and one of them was the night. And my teacher, of course, questioned how I could write something so great. And I mean, it was, it was almost devastating to me because I wanted my gift to be recognized at that moment in seventh grade as a 12 year old. And so when I wrote my first novel, I actually spoke of her. Um, most recently in the last year, I ran into her and she told me, I read your book and I'm sorry. I'm sorry that, you know, that, that I, I questioned you. Right. And so for me, it, that helped, that experience with her only made me grow. A lot of times it would make me put my put my pen down because I would feel like, you know, nobody's going to believe that I actually wrote this or that I have this much talent or I have the ability to write like this. But surprisingly, when I dropped my first book, the the response was outstanding. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it was. And you also, in addition to everything that you have going on, recently started the Bold Agency, where bold stands for believe and obtain life's destiny. And I think that speaks exactly to that story that you were just talking about. So talk to me about the Bold Agency and where all that kind of plays a role in your life. The Bold Agency is my baby. It is, it is something that I have longed to do for the last three years. When I started off in the industry, of course, I told you, you know, the first day out, I hit the bestsellers list. And that was like, that was such an amazing experience. But then when it came to the business, the literary industry, I have been through the woes of the industry, signing with publishers um, and, and never receiving a dime from my work. And so I started the Bold Agency because I empowered myself. I, I read the books. I did the research to become a self-published author and to still be able to hit those um, national ranking charts. And so my objective with the Bold Agency is not necessarily to help people to just publish, but to empower them. It kind of goes with that saying that if, you know, I can give you a fish and you're going to eat 
for the day or I can teach you how to fish and you're going to eat for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. How many people so far have been uh, in or through your program um, that since you started? So I have four authors who have all hit the national number one on the national bestselling charts That's awesome. far since the Bowl Agency has launched. That is awesome. 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 I, I listening to you, I hear a lot of spirituality listening to you. I hear a lot of faith. Why is that such a key theme in your conversation, in your books, in your messaging? Why is that? Because faith is all we have. Faith is faith is the seed. Um, I grew up in, in a household where faith was important. My grandmother instilled faith in me at a very young age. And so growing up that it just kind of grew. And I, like I said, even when I was down to my last, I had faith. So faith is huge for me. This the belief that there is someone greater than me who has already orchestrated my destiny. That's very important to me. There's so many people that are watching and watch this program, Tracy, and I really want you to leave them with a message that they can remember when they feel like giving up. I hear you talk about those key moments, and, and I really want to drive that home for them because I think that it's one thing for us to look at people on social media and uh, try to compare our lives to, to each other and say, oh, I wish I was there. I wish I was there. And if you don't see the millions of dollars in your account, you feel like this isn't for me anymore. What is the message that you give to those entrepreneurs and not even entrepreneurs, anyone that's just chasing their dreams? What's that message that you said? The first part of my message is that faith requires action. So, you know, we're, we're, we all want to be millionaires, but guess what? The average millionaire has seven streams of income, but prior to having seven, they started with one. And so even if you don't see a million dollars right now, I, even if you, you, you're in the negative, it won't always be like this. We have to remember that we have to start somewhere. Um, earlier today, I was while I was in, at my makeup appointment, my makeup artist and I were having a conversation. And when I got back into my car, I realized something that we get into our cars and we start them up, but they can't move without gas. So you can have faith and not have any action and you're stuck. And, and I find that a lot of times when we're stuck is because we're not putting the action behind our faith. So to all of those who may be struggling, to the hustlers out there, to those that are still working a nine to five, listen, your, your faith with your action is going to take you to the heights and the levels that you want to go. I think the scripture is faith without works is dead and you hit that on there. <laughs> so what is next for you? I mean, you've already accomplished so much so far and I know that it can't end here because every entrepreneur always just keeps thinking and thinking and thinking. So what's next for you, Tracy? So my next, my next thing is, is a new book. Um, this year for me has been all about self-love and growth. And so I am working on a new book um, entitled That Girl is Poison. And it's all about how your environment does not have to determine who it is that you become. Um, I also have a candle line that is dropping that I'm super excited about. <laughs> I am so excited about these candles because they also have a theme of love, self-love, familial love, and, um, they have a cool twist because I love music. So they have a cool twist to them and they're gonna be called Love and Lyrics. So those are the two things that are next for me um, coming up. And then I have the reserve table of 12. So I'm gonna be having a interactive conversation with the bosses, not just the bosses from Philly, but a few bosses that have stories of how they got to their purpose as well. Awesome. 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 I'm looking forward to all of it, especially the candles, because I am a candle lover. If you know me, I have them everywhere all over my house. I love candles, so I can't awesome. wait. To <laughs> so tech, tell us now where people can follow you, keep up with you and uh, just stay connected to your brand and your world. Absolutely. You can follow me on Instagram. It's crowned air Inc. C R O W N E D H E I R I N C. You can also follow The Bold Agency on Instagram as well. It's The Bold Agency LLC or on Facebook, The Bold Agency as well. Or you can find me on Facebook, author Tracy T. Cooper. And The Bold Agency also has a website, which is boldagencyllc.com. And then I also have something that is very special to me. It is my group, 
my nonprofit called Girl Secure Yourself. So you can also join the group. Um, I'm there daily giving out inspirational words and, and we give out a million dollars worth of game for free. So connect with us there as well. How did you start the Girl Secure Yourself nonprofit? When did that begin? Girl Secure Yourself started last year. My, um, As I said, I released the book Girl Secure Yourself, but bigger than that, I actually wanted to help women to secure themselves. And so at my book release last year, it was actually the birthing of Girl Secure Yourself nonprofit. And we have a pretty large group on Facebook of 700 plus women. Um, we have therapists there. We have credit repair specialists. We have um, those who are amazing in the financial world. I have realtors there. So whatever it is that you're trying to connect to, Girl Secure Yourself really has those connections. Like you said, just full circle, everything in life. I mean, it's really one thing to talk about being a boss in this day and age. It's one thing to talk about leading, but it's another when you're able to lean back and hand your and, and hand out those resources that once benefited you to the very people who are working with you. Absolutely. That's really crazy. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Absolutely. I, I love everything that you have going on. Hopefully I'll be able to get a copy of your book because this the next time we do this interview, I want to be able to pull out those liners. <laughs> you sure I get your information today so I can send you some some a copy of the books. Oh, that'd be great. Well, again, I appreciate you coming on the show. And uh she we she did tell you guys where you can find her online, but you can also pop into the city of brotherly love and find her there too. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tracy for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. And thank you to all of you for watching. Again, if you would like to get in contact with her and stay updated with her brand, make sure to follow her on the social media pages that she did notify notify us about. Again, you guys can always watch me here on Up With India. And for more news updates and information, just pop back in tomorrow morning. I'll see you guys soon.